So I was recently invited to help our HOA to work with our contracted landscapers in managing our community common areas. In doing so, I've been doing routine things that might help with water conservation, such as mapping out our irrigation system, rehabilitating our drip system, and working with volunteers on maintaining water harvesting features throughout our community. During my irrigation survey, I came across this soil moisture monitoring hardware next to one of our irrigation timers. I was curious and asked our landscapers if it worked, where it was installed, and at what depth. The response I got was this, suggesting the installation would obviously need to be revisited and or redone. One major issue, of course, is that the timer controls irrigation for five zones in our community, and it's not clear if the sensor was installed under the eaves of this building where results might be biased from roof runoff. Given the current situation, I started doing some research and came across these capacitance type soil moisture sensors. These sensors measure the soil's capacity to transmit electromagnetic waves or pulses, which can then be related to soil water content. This looks promising, but realizing an installation at just one site to manage all of our irrigation zones can be rather expensive, totaling about $500. In doing my research, I discovered that the technology that supports these formal commercial sensors can actually be had for about a dollar and a half on eBay. Given easy access to microcontrollers that can be programmed in Python or C, I came up with a hardware design that significantly offsets the cost of a commercial installation and even includes data logging, which is not available in commercial setups. Upon doing further research, I came across this excellent summary on YouTube by Flowera that summarizes some of the challenges you might encounter when purchasing these sensors from low-bid retailers on eBay. In other words, you might end up getting what you pay for. Specifically, Flowera's review mentions that cost savings in manufacturing may result in missing voltage regulators, inappropriate timer chips, and poor quality bills resulting in lack of circuit grounding. These issues can interfere with sensor response and signal range, especially if you're interested in running your setup on three volts, as was my intention for low power deployments. In fact, I'd already purchased a few batches of these sensors on eBay and confirmed the same. Of the 20 or so sensors I had on hand, only four met the hardware quality criteria summarized on Flower's channel, as shown in green on this slide. I didn't want to give up on this project, so I gave Amazon a try by purchasing new batches of sensors from three different vendors. In doing so, I carefully inspected vendor images to confirm that both a voltage regulator was included and that an appropriate timer chip had been installed, as summarized in Flora's videos. For the Amazon purchase, I actually had had better luck with two of the three batches meeting all the quality criteria. I won't mention who the vendors are since quality can change over time, Suffice it to say that it's something you need to be aware of when selecting and purchasing, especially if you want to run your setup on 3 volts. Having found some sensors that met quality assurance, I then tested these sensors by using a Feather MO microcontroller with an OLED display for measuring sensor response in air and water as is common practice. So here are the initial results of the three batches purchased on Amazon. You can see here that batch 2 gave me the widest range in sensor response with good repeatability and small standard deviation. In response, I kept this batch and returned the other two for a full refund. In addition, I also tested repeatability over time, details of which I'll share in a future video. The bottom line being that batch 2 realized repeatable results under varying conditions. Good, I now have sensors that have passed quality assurance and will give me some confidence should I decide to use this for managing our irrigation. With wet dry reference values in hand, the next thing was to come up with a means to program the hardware to give me a qualitative idea of soil moisture content. So the first thing was to divide the range of sensor response values by five. I then found evenly spaced breakpoints between these values and determined the ranges that would characterize the same. I'll include a link to a spreadsheet in the description of this video if you'd like to see the calculations. These ranges can now give me a qualitative feel as to the degree of moisture based on sensor response. To make things easier for displaying information on an OLED, I echoed Amazon's five-star rating system since this is something most individuals are familiar with and is thus fairly intuitive. Respective ranges were then captured in a function called readValue 
that is referenced in my loop within an Arduino sketch. Again, I'll include links to all the code in the description of this video for those who want to review the same. And here's a video of the modified code showing how the sensor works. Okay, folks, so what I have here is the uh, data logger running the uh, five-star rating system sketch. And uh, I've also got this capacitive soil moisture sensor. You can see now that it's dry. When I put it on a wet paper towel, you see I can start getting a response. Especially if I put my finger on it and push it down, I can get up to four stars, which is just shy of it being completely wet in a glass of water, so. Okay, folks, and we just witnessed about eight tenths of it. No, I'm sorry, nine tenths of an inch, uh, pretty close to it anyway, over the last two days here in uh, Tucson, Arizona. So thanks to that uh, rainfall, uh, this water harvesting tank is uh, overflowing and it's discharging to this little uh, basin right here that supports this tombstone rose that was planted this year. So um, I think what we'll do is scrape away some of this mulch and go ahead and install the sensor here and watch it over time. And so you can see with all that rain that the wetting profile on this is maybe an inch, maybe two inches. Things feel pretty dry down here. Well, no, there's a little moisture. Okay, I'm about ready to uh, uh, take this little sensor outside. It's been sitting in this little jar of water for the last two days with no power. I just plugged in a battery and you can see that the reading is right, right about where it should be for the test that I've been doing with respect to air and water. It hasn't varied, which is a good sign. And the sensor's now been removed and there's the value for the removed sensor. Now you can see that the sensor's been uh, installed in this PVC tubing to give it a little bit of depth. And I've got this little watertight fitting that I'm gonna use to uh, plug and unplug uh, that little uh, logger to see how it's performing over time. And there it is, ready to be installed. Okay, the sensor's in the ground in this little basin. Okay, so I haven't designed a proper enclosure for this little microcontroller yet, so I just have it in a plastic bag. Uh, and then I've got it hooked up uh, via this little watertight fitting right here, uh, which can be easily removed. So let's turn it on. And the value I'm reading is about 440, 439, 440 thereabouts. So now we'll need to go back and uh, check our five-star rating system because I haven't yet uploaded that code. All right, so it's time to close things up. So I'm just gonna push that down, put the lid on. So that makes a nice uh, watertight housing. It's amazing what you can do with PVC uh, for my sensor at depth. So we're gonna leave that alone and monitor it over the next few weeks, maybe do some experiments, put a little bit of water on it, see how the sensor responds and log the data. So a few final thoughts, starting with the commercial sensor we currently have installed in our HOA. In finding the online manual for the same, I learned this hardware uses a tensiometer rather than a capacitive soil moisture sensor for measuring ambient conditions. The unit of measurement for tensiometers is centibar, which in essence measures the stickiness of water to soil, and thus how much your plant roots must pull on that soil to release that water. For this data to be useful in irrigation management, tensiometers must be calibrated to different soil types since the ability for plants to access water will vary as a function of soil composition and texture. As you can see here, for a given soil water potential, more water is available to plants in clay soils and less water available in sandy soils. As such, you can't just take a straight reading and manage your watering without doing a deeper dive into your local conditions. This is clearly recognized in the manual for these sensors, which asks users to calibrate the same using tables or local experience and then adjust results as needed by observing the landscape. So the bottom line is, this isn't really something you can just put into the ground and walk away. Effectiveness requires some knowledge of soils, proper sensor placement to match rooting depth, and obviously refinement over time. To be clear, capacitive soil moisture sensors like the ones summarized in this video do not measure soil water tension, but they can be calibrated to approximate volumetric water content as a function of sensor response. Having said that, the discussion around these sensors usually ends at just popping them in the soil and making a judgment call on watering, which really isn't much better than the system we currently have installed in our own HOA. 
On that note, I'll be running some experiments to see if I can actually do a formal calibration on these sensors that correlates an extrapolated volumetric water content to water availability for plants as a function of a given soil texture. By not taking this into account, I suspect using these sensors for managing irrigation in a planned community or agricultural setting may not be effective, or at least that's the hypothesis I'd like to investigate. If you'd like to follow my experiments, please consider subscribing for updates and stay tuned for experimental results. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.